Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Pajama Grandma Panda today. Not really got my panda pajamas on today. And I want to talk about dream customers. Since I'm in my pajamas with my cozy pillow, I was, of course, dreaming not too long ago. And dreaming, I was actually having a dream about my ideal customers, my favorite customers in my business, in the whole wide world, people I love and adore to work with. And you're probably wondering, well, what the heck does people and customers and people you like to work with, number one, why would you dream about it? Number two, what does that have to do with supersizing my business and growing my business? I will tell you absolutely everything because if you're not working with people that you love to work with and that you want to serve, you're not going to be serving them to the best of your ability. So what the heck are dream clients? What are dream customers? What are dream patients? They are your absolute people you love to work with the most, the people that you really enjoy serving, the people that you would help because you like them so much and you appreciate them so much, even if they weren't paying you. Now, for some of you, that's going to be a stretch because you're like, I'm not doing anything for anybody if they don't pay me. But for a lot of us, we're here to make the world a better place. And we do that by serving as many people as we possibly can. And we do that through our businesses, through the businesses that we've created, because that's our way of giving back and making the world a better place. So I want you to think about today, and you've been in business for a while. Chances are you've had some customers that you've loved, and you've also probably had some customers that you wished you hadn't had. Has anybody ever had a customer they wish they hadn't had? I sure have. I actually had to let our biggest customer go once, and that means I had to fire them. And you're probably saying, but I thought the customer was always right. Poppycock, that is the biggest pile of crap I've ever heard in my life. I don't know who made that up or who wrote that into a book. Some guru told people that the customer is always right, but they're forgetting that human beings are fickle and they might always be right in their own mind, but they're not always right for your business. And there's a big difference between the customer always being right and the customer being right for your business and they, whether you should serve them or not. It's kind of like the saying about good and evil and money, you know, money is the root of all evil. No, the love of money is the root of all evil. And there's a huge difference between those two statements, right? There's a huge difference in how you approach money. Well, the same thing is true as cust of customers and the people that we serve. If we believe that they are always right, meaning we're always wrong, because whenever somebody's right, somebody has to be wrong in a, in a polar universe, correct? And if we're setting our situation up so that somebody's right and somebody's wrong, that's always a win-lose situation. Who wants that? Nobody in business. We always want to set things up so that they're win-win. We want to win by having our customers pay us, right? Usually it's they pay us for the services or the products that we provide them. And we want them to win because we want them to know that they've gotten so much more value out of the product or service that we've given them that they're happy to pay us what we ask in exchange for that good or service, those products or services. So the best way to do that, and the best way to supersize our business is by knowing who our ideal customer is and what they want, what they need, what their problems are, what their desires are, what they care about the most, why they buy from us, why do they like us, why do they love us, why did they come to our business in the first place? And by thinking about our decisions and thinking about what we do in our business from our perfect dream, I like to call it my dream customer because I want my awesome, best, ideal, most perfect dream customers. I want all my customers to be like that. Um, what does that person look like and if we look at all of our decisions through the eyes of, of him or her, mine's a her, what, what does she think about that? What would she think about this new product I'm thinking about offering? What would she think about this service? What would she think about my price increase? What would she think about our new delivery mechanism? Whatever it is for your business, always think about it. Always think about your decisions and your choices through the eyes of your ideal customer. Nope, I'm going to be controversial here. I'm going to say not through the eyes of your stockholder, not through the eyes of your VC funder, not through the eyes of your banker, not through the eyes of your greedy cousin, through the eyes of your dream customer. Because if you do that, it's automatic for your business to supersize. 
If you look at it through the eyes of any of those other folks, guess what? You get into making decisions that are not in your customer's best interest, not in your ideal customer's best interest. Therefore, they're not going to want to continue to, to serve you, not serve you, continue to buy from you or be a part of your business. And if that happens, boom, we're in big trouble. So go out and make it an awesome day. Think about your dream customer. Who is your best favorite customer? Now, best, better make it aside here, your best customer might not be your dream customer. I found myself in my Italian food business, our best customer, and they represented like 70% of our gross revenue at the time, was our worst customer. So our best customer financially was our worst customer for our business. And that's the customer I ended up having to actually fire. And I dreaded it. I put it off for a year. I was scared to death of firing them. But it was the smartest, best decision I ever made because it made it possible for everyone in my organization to do better and serve the rest of our customers better. And we easily replaced their business in less than 90 days. So don't let any customer, even if they're a big bad corporation or a big good corporation, hold you over a barrel and let you think you have to make decisions for your business based on them. Because if they're not treating you and your employees right, it's not worth it. So that was an aside, right? Anyway, go out, make it an awesome day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Have a super-sized, super-short day.